Welcome to June's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is longest duplicate substring. Given a string S, consider all duplicated substrings that are contiguous and appear two or more times. Return any duplicated substring that has the longest possible length. And if there is none, just return empty string. We're given the string banana. We're going to return ANA because ANA is the longest repeating substring. ANA appears here once, uh, here appears twice. Notice that's overlapping though, so overlaps are fine. A, B, C, D is going to return nothing because there are no duplicated substrings. So this is a very, very hard problem. I s tried to solve it for a while, but I ultimately had to look at the solution, and even then it still confused me. So let's first look at some of the hints. It says to first a binary search for the length of the answer. So before we do that, let's think of some intuitions here. The longest possible length of a repeating substring is going to be the length of the string minus one, right? Obviously, banana is not going to appear again. It can't be duplicated. So it would have to be the length um, of five that might repeat. That could be a possible candidate, five, five. If that's not it, then maybe four, four. So if we were to do this like just brute force, it might make sense to just start at the longest possible substring, check to see, like put that into a dictionary and check to see the next one. If that is inside the dictionary, if that's not in there, then we can put that into the dictionary and just keep checking. And as soon as we find one of the substrings that exists, then we know, hey, this is the longest possible substring that is repeating. So return that. And that was the initial approach I went with, but I kept on getting <clears throat> memory limit errors and I think the reason for that is just these test cases give us really long strings. So using strings to compare each time and putting those into a hash like just runs out of memory. So how could we um, solve that? And the hint that they give us is to use Robin Karp's algorithm. So before we get into Robin Karp's algorithm, let's think about what do they mean by binary search. And I've already explained to you that the longest possible length of the substring is going to be the length of the string minus one. And the shortest one is going to be zero, right? It's going to be an empty string. So that actually can help us to figure out, okay, if we had some sort of helper function that could tell us whether a substring of a certain length exists inside the string, if that pattern exists inside the string, then we can actually do a binary search, right? Because we can start with the limits of zero to length of the string minus one, start in the middle. And if we find that the sub a substring, repeating substring exists, then we could check to see, hey, is there even a longer one that exists? And just do a binary search that way. And if it doesn't exist, then we'll check, well, maybe there's a shorter one. Let's check the shorter one. So before um, we go into that, this is the Robin Karp algorithm. And the reason I just copy pasted it is I still don't understand it. It's pretty confusing. But the basic idea is the same. We're going to use this rolling window approach. But instead of comparing strings completely, the entire string, we're going to create into a hash. So what we do is we take in a length that's going to be called the mid here because I'm going to do a binary search. And we're going to first use this nums list, which is going to be a list converted into numbers for each character inside that string. And using that, we could multiply it by some sort of base and divide it by a, a modular, or uh, I forget what you call it, a modular or something like that. And that's going to create, uh, give us a, like a unique hash. And use, using this unique hash, every time we check to see the next sequence of substrings, we're going to just subtract the number character from previous, add the number character, uh, number represented by the, uh, ah, the number represented for that character to this hash and recalculate it and just check to see if that exists inside of our hash. And if it does, since this is unique, we know this pattern exists. And then we can mark our position and say, hey, this at this position, actually, uh, with this length of substring, there is a duplicate. 
All right, so I'm sorry that's not a very great explanation, but unfortunately, if you really want to get into this, it, 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 it would take me a long time, and I still don't understand it, to tell the truth. So let's do our binary search here, and it's pretty typical, just have the left and right pointer, call it zero, zero, and what I'm going to also do is initialize a start and end, and this is going to start at zero and zero. We'll assume that there is no duplicate substring right now. Um, and before we do that, I actually want to create a nums list that's going to represent each character in the string as a as a num. So what I would do is use the ORD function and say for C in S, make that into an ASCII number and just put that into a list. Okay, so that will allow us to calculate our hash. So now we want to do our binary search. So what's the length? Well, okay, so let's, let's say while L is less than or equal to R, calculate our mid, which is just going to be L plus R divided by 2, and let's use our helper function, rab and carp, put in that mid, and we give us a position, if it exists. So the first thing we want to check to see is, does a position even exist? So if position uh, equals negative one, and we can see that if it doesn't exist, we would return a negative one here. So we initialize that. So if we never find a repeating subsequence or hash, then we're just going to return negative one. So if it doesn't exist, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to check to see if, well, maybe there's a shorter subsequence that we can check. So that would mean um, our right pointer, or which is kind of like the high pointer, will equal mid minus one. Otherwise, say that, yes, we did find a position for this. Okay, that's great. Let's initialize our start and ends then. And we'll say, hey, start is the position that we've returned, and position plus mid, which is like the length. And we actually want to check to see, hey, maybe there's even bigger ones, so continue that with mid plus one. So finally, once this is finished, we just need to return the substring, and that's going to just be the what? That'll be the position, and position plus L, that's going to be our max length that we've calculated, and you're going to have to do a minus one here as well, because um, Because, oh, well, never mind. We already calculated that up here. So start and uh, start and end. It's mid. That work? Okay, let me let me check and see if this works. I don't think that was it, though. I think I have to do a minus one here. Nope. Hmm. Return returned plus mid uh, start runs. So yeah. Huh. Nice one. Hmm. Oh, of course. What am I doing? It's one. Yes, I was wondering why I was just returning an empty string. So this should work. Here we go and submit that. There we go. So that's accepted. So this was, it, uh, I apologize, it's not the best explanation. So I really. I uh, encourage you to um, look at other videos and look at more solutions to get this better idea. But hopefully like the basic intuition makes sense because I personally don't see a re it reasonable to expect somebody to know this algorithm. So thank you.